Good morning and welcome to our webinar today on African American history in Ohio's Little Smokies. I'm Alyssa Yapel with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources and um, we're continuing our celebration of Black History Month today with this webinar. Yesterday we did one on the Underground Railroad and if you missed it and want to go back and watch it will be on our YouTube page. I'll post the link in the Q&A in just a minute. Um, but I want to let you know also what we have coming down the pipeline this month. Um, on the 17th at 10 a.m. we have a webinar on Bobcats in Ohio. On February 23rd we will be talking about the CCC legacy. You'll hear some about the CCC today and if you're not sure what that stands for it's the Civilian Conservation Corps. Um, so we will uh, be looking at the big picture of the CCC in Ohio on the 23rd. On the 24th um, we have an awesome program with our friends from Houston Woods State Park on maple syrup production. So um, please join us for some of those webinars. Uh, but with that being said, I want to let you know who we have with us today, and that is Dr. Andrew uh, Fight. I think he goes by Drew, but uh, Dr. Fight is Professor of American History in the Social Studies Department at Shawnee State University. We're so happy that he's with us today. Um, he also serves as the coordinator of the history major and the Digital Appalachian Studies program, and he directs the Digital History Lab at Shawnee State University's Clark Memorial Library, and is the developer and editor of um, Scioto Historical, a free and educational mobile app. You might get to see some of that today, um, and it's an also a website that explores the history of Portsmouth, Ohio, and the surrounding Appalachian region. So uh, with further ado, welcome Dr. Fight, and I'm going to send you live now. All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Alyssa, for that, that nice introduction. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to be here to share my research that I've been doing with my students at Shawnee State University here in Portsmouth uh, into the history of Shawnee State Park and Forest, what um, was originally promoted as Ohio's Little Smokies. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to do um, today is share a PowerPoint slide, but I'm also going to share the screen of my uh, my phone, my smartphone, which has the Scioto Historical app on it. Um, all right, so let me uh, let me start with uh, sharing my my uh, PowerPoint slides here. And there we go. All right. First, I also want to acknowledge some uh, uh, assistance that uh, really all this would not have been possible without, and that is uh, the support from the Ohio History Service Corps, which is an AmeriCorps program. Uh, Shawnee State University's Digital History Lab is a host site for the Ohio History Service Corps, and they've been uh, a great help uh, with, with many of our projects. Um, we're also supported by the Clark Memorial Library, the Dep Department of Social Sciences, and the College of Arts and Sciences at Shawnee State. And also I should mention the uh, Development Foundation of Shawnee State University. So what we're gonna be um, doing today in some ways you might say is a demonstration uh, of, of the Scioto Historical app. Um, if you like, you can uh, check out the website, scioto-historical.org. Everything on the website is also uh, available in the app. Uh, and this is meant for classroom adoption, it's meant for uh, taking uh, driving tours or historical walking tours. Um, but basically what we do is create virtual historical markers um, that allow for us to uh, put historical photographs, uh, oral history interviews, all types of multimedia uh, to tell the history uh, of, of uh, different locations here in, in Southern Ohio. Uh, and so we're going to be looking at the history of uh, African Americans in the Shawnee State Forest um, in the 1930s, focusing on the contribution of African American enrollees uh, in the, the Civilian Conservation Corps, uh, which really built the original infrastructure of what became Shawnee State Park and Shawnee State Forest. So uh, to provide a little context, um, you know, what was the Civilian Conservation Corps? Uh, this was a jobs program uh, created uh, by uh, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt um, 
And this is uh, from a message to Congress that Roosevelt sent in 1933, uh, where he says, I propose to create a civilian conservation corps to be used in simple work, not interfering with normal employment and not and confining itself to, to forestry, the prevention of soil erosion, flood control, and similar projects. The overwhelming majority of unemployed Americans who are now walking the streets and receiving private or public relief would infinitely prefer to work. We can take a vast army of these unemployed out into healthful surroundings. We can eliminate to some extent, at least, the threat that enforced idleness brings to spiritual and moral stability. So the CCC was meant to be a jobs program to help the unemployed. Um, <clears throat> it, here's the official uh, seal of the original CCC. Um, but it was created by the Emergency Conservation Work Act of 1933. Uh, and it was the first relief and jobs program of the New Deal. Uh, unemployed single men ages 18 to 25 from families that were on relief were eligible and unemployed single uh, <clears throat> World War I veterans, um, and this is the only age exception, uh, could also join. So there would be special World War I veteran units, and there were a number of these that were here in the Shawnee State Forest. The CCC was uh, segregated. Uh, the Corps was open to whites and African Americans and uh, Native Americans, uh, people of various different ethnic backgrounds. Um, but like the United States military at the time, uh, it was operated on a segregated basis. Um, enlistments were for six months. Uh, you had the option of re-enlisting for up to two years. Enrollees were paid $30 a month and 25 of that was sent home to their family. Uh, and so the men would only really receive $5 uh, a month in cash that they could then use for however they liked. Um, because of this pay, $30 a month, uh, they became known as the dollar a day boys. And many of the labor unions at the time were not so happy with this because they thought that that was actually driving down uh, wages across the United States. The camps were run by the War Department and Army Reserve officers, uh, but the projects uh, themselves were run by, for example, the U.S. Department of Interior and Agriculture, but also uh, this was done in conjunction with state authorities like in Ohio, uh, where you see the construction of state parks and work in state forests. Uh, each company had a regular or reserve army officer as its commander, plus a junior officer, a camp doctor, and an educational advisors. Um, I would say the companies uh, were fully staffed at 200 uh, men. Um, they were assigned to specific projects. Um, whose supervisors work for, again, either the state or federal agencies. One of the things that the CCC introduced um, rather early on after some resistance to the program was what they called the Local Experience Men Program. Um, so comp local uh, CCC companies would employ local experienced men or LEMs as they were called as foremen to supervise work crews. Um, one of the things this did was it, it, it alleviated some of the tension that existed between local communities and the program, uh, because generally what was happening is you were bringing in people from outside the area uh, to do construction projects. And so there was, there was uh, uh, some resistance to that, like, why aren't you guys hiring the locals that know how to do this type of thing? So um, there were a number of LEMs hired uh, for, each, for each of the camps, um, uh, and they worked as foremen supervising work crews. Now, over the whole uh, 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 time of the CCC, uh, a total of 3.4 million Americans enrolled, um, some 200,000 African Americans. In Ohio, the, uh, the numbers are about 139,400 uh, Ohioans enrolled in the CCC. Um, and if you look again at the whole thing, $61.9 million in federal money was spent on Ohio CCC projects and camps. And Ohio averaged 33 camps in operation during the nine years of the CCC program. By 1942, more than 4,500 camps had come and gone across the United States. They give you just a little fact and interesting figure here. 
1934, for the Thanksgiving dinner across the camps all across the United States, the U.S. government purchased 55,000 turkeys to feed camps. And here in Shawnee uh, State Forest, each camp received 33 birds uh, with one bird issued to every six men, which ensured that one out of three men would receive a drumstick. So uh, the place we're talking about here is Shawnee State Forest. We're located uh, on the Ohio River, um, due south from Columbus, um, just uh, west of the city of Portsmouth. And the city of Portsmouth and the forest history are very much connected. And I think we can see this with the CCC. So the Shawnee State Forest was the uh, original state forest in Ohio, uh, dates to the 1920s part of the original conservation movement. Um, and before there was the state forest, what you had here was uh, uh, really about the same time they were created was a game preserve, the Roosevelt Game Preserve. And from that Roosevelt Game Preserve would be carved uh, what became Shawnee State Park. Now this is a map um, of uh, uh, CCC sites in the Shawnee State Forest, which was promoted as Ohio's Little Smokies. Um, and what you see is that uh, Shawnee State Forest ended up having seven camps, um, seven CCC camps, and it was one of the largest CCC operations in the state because it was the largest uh, state forest. <clears throat> We've also marked on here uh, Picnic Point, which is uh, uh, originally was promoted as a tourist attraction. Um, it's a scenic overlook. It's the only one that you could drive to uh, in a vehicle uh, when it was first built and developed by the CCC back in the 1930s. Uh, where, where the circle is and says you are here, um, that is the location of the new uh, memorial that was constructed to recognize the, the contribution of the CCC in building the Shawnee State Park and Forest. So you can see from this newspaper, uh, November 1934, um, uh, news about uh, the development of a lake um, on the game preserve. Uh, and this would ultimately be Roosevelt Lake uh, that was built by the CCC. So here's a, a recent photograph of the memorial and you can see uh, a shelter house, um, actually two uh, shelter houses if you look into the distance on the left. Um, there are two shelter houses here. Uh, you have the new uh, memorial there um, and then the Roosevelt Lake in the background. Uh, but the men who built Roosevelt Lake, the dam, and also uh, the bridge across Turkey Creek there, um, uh, came from uh, Camp Roosevelt, CCC Camp Roosevelt. This is a, a photograph of the barracks of the camp and they are located on State Route 125 um, basically at the entrance of the game preserve uh, also which is is the location of camp oyo uh, the boy scout camp that many people know of and here's a photograph of uh, the historic bridge that uh, the men of of uh, camp roosevelt company 1545 uh, constructed uh, just before it was demolished in 2016. So it was uh, quite an impressive structure uh, built in what is known as a, a parkature uh, style of architecture that was developed uh, with the national park system uh, going back to the early 20th century. Um, and with the uh, build out of a lot of the park infrastructure across the United States with the CCC, you see this style of architecture using local materials incorporating them uh, into the structure so that it fits into the landscape. You can see that uh, the dam here on the left has been restored uh, and that's the dam that was constructed again by the CCC. So here's a, a photograph, one of the rare photographs of African Americans working uh, uh, here in Shawnee State Forest. And here is the uh, photograph of the construction of uh, Roosevelt Dam. Um, and if you if you look down into the big trench there, and then you can see some men standing there. Uh, those are some of the CCC men from Company 1545. 
And this is a historic photograph of, of the dam just as it was being finished. And here is a uh, architectural uh, drawing, the original plans for the bridge. Again, in that parkature style. And a photograph of it uh, soon after it was constructed. And here's another photograph of it being, being demolished. But ultimately, with the demolition of the bridge, um, uh, it was uh, agreed to that uh, because it was a, a national historic uh, structure, um, that uh, and it that it had to be offset with uh, some sort of memorial or cultural resource that would be made available to the public, and so this is what would lead to the construction of the CCC Stone Memorial. And you can see some of the stonework of the original bridge here. Now, this is a key uh, part of the story. You can see this stone, it's referred to as the signature stone. And it says built by company 1545 AD 1934. Uh, this was the, the, the clue that ultimately led for led me ultimately down the path that uh, to the history of the company that built the bridge and built the dam. Up until this point, the history here had been completely lost. Um, it had never been written up. Um, and the fact that this bridge, the dam, and the main park infrastructure there uh, was built by an all African American CCC enrollee company uh, that had been completely lost to time. And it turned out that the company that built it was also a, a rare company in the sense that it was a World War I veteran company. So you had uh, African American World War I veterans uh, who constructed the original infrastructure here at the park. And here is the stone memorial, uh, and you can see how it is roughly inspired by the design of the original bridge. And there's the signature stone, which has been placed into the memorial. Additionally, you can find some uh, interpretive signage, such as this, that tells the history, not just of the African American contribution, but of all the camps here in Shawnee State Forest. So there were seven camps, and four of them were segregated all African American camps, uh, and three of them were segregated all white camps. Uh, Dr. Fite, before moving on from the bridge, uh, we have a question from Randy asking, do you know why the bridge was demolished? Yes. Um, <clears throat> the abutment on the, if you're looking at the photograph now, the original bridge, the abutment on the right hand side there uh, uh, was starting to fail. Um, and there was concern uh, that the bridge could not handle the uh, modern logging trucks um, that were used uh, in the area. Um, and so it was really uh, 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 the engineer's uh, decision that the bridge was was no longer uh, safe um, and that it that it was best to replace it. Now there was uh, some consideration given to building the new bridge um, just next to the old one, um, but uh, it would have entailed some major earthwork uh, to remove part of uh, a ridge that's just off to the right um, that would have ballooned the cost of the project. Uh, so that it was prohibitive. Um, and so ultimately that's how we came to um, a resolution. Um, and it's really thanks to federal you know, law that, that provides for, for uh, mitigation uh, when you have the, the, the loss of a cultural resource like this, uh, that money was set aside um, because it was a partly funded federal project for the construction of, of the memorial, as well as the development of, of some of the content that we're looking at uh, that went into the site of historical project um, that we're experiencing today. All right. Okay, so um, what I want to do now is uh, let me share my. Um, you know, I'm sorry. We have one more mm -hmm. question that came in about the memorial. Sure. If you don't mind, yep. um, Joe asks in the memorial, what was the wedge-shaped stone pointing upward? under the signature stone? Um, 
Yeah, there is another larger stone underneath the signature stone. It has some initials carved into it. Um, we were not sure um, who the initials were, but actually a number of the stones had, had been carved and had initials. So there was an attempt to incorporate the stones that had carvings in them into the memorial. So maybe with additional research, we'll be able to figure out who some of those uh, initials were, but um, uh, you know, the signature stone was definitely the, the most uh, important piece of the bridge. Um, and that now has been, you could say, almost enshrined uh, in this new memorial. OK, um, let me share my uh, app here off my phone and uh, folks can get a sense of. Uh, let's see, did I do this right? We can see your home screen. Yeah, let me try that again. How's that? I think that's working. Uh, it looks the same on my end. You don't see my phone? <clears throat> I see your phone. I don't see the app. OK. Now. Yes. There we go. OK. So um, <clears throat> this is the landing page when you first launch the app. But what I'm going to do is go to the map interface so that we can, uh, you know, sort of geographically uh, interface with the app and um, see where we are. I'm zooming out so that we can see all of Ohio. Um, and each one of those red uh, uh, little tags is a uh, historical marker, a virtual historical marker of, of our project. So we're going to zoom in here down towards Portsmouth and head over out here to the west. And we're going to look at the at the forest here. Um, so coming in here, you can see Shawnee State Park. Uh, you know, we're zooming in some more. We're getting to Roosevelt Lake. And here is the, oh, I'm sorry, that's the Overlook story. Here is the uh, Stone Memorial. And um, there's a photo gallery. Uh, you know that you can take a look at so a lot of the images that we had seen um, <clears throat> but uh, there is a narrative story uh, where you can learn more about uh, this site as well as others in the park um, this is a list of some of the men from company 1545 the, we've not been able to uncover the the names of everybody that served in the unit but uh, these are some of the leaders uh, of the unit So let me go back and I'm going to zoom back out um, and go to another site. Um, so here's Camp Oyo, um, and this would be where Camp Roosevelt was located. Zooming back out, I'm going to go over, over here to what was known as Shawnee Number 2. Shawnee Camp number two. Is this it? There it is. So this was another one of the African American segregated camps um, known as Camp Shawnee, Shawnee number two. Camp Shawnee number one um, was a white, uh, all, all white uh, camp. And the Camp Shawnee number two was the African American camp. So there's some of the story there. I want to go back to my slide uh, presentation now. And so here we are back again at Camp Shawnee number two. Um, incredibly, we've been able to locate uh, the blueprints for um, Camp Shawnee number two. Um, these are located in the Portsmouth Public Library in their local history department. Uh, but if you visit the site, you can still find uh, sort of concrete footers and various other sort of remnants uh, of, of the camp there, although it is largely uh, overgrown now with forest. Um, and you might drive past it and have no idea that that was what you just drove through. And this is a, a group photo um, of Company 1520. Uh, again, the segregated African-American camp uh, or company um, located at Shawnee number two. And you can see um, you have uh, the white officers and local experienced men 
um, and state officials uh, overseeing the project standing in the background. So that says Camp Shawnee number two. Um, there's there's a sort of numbering system there that uh, refers to this being a state project uh, in the Shawnee State Forest. Um, Company 1520 and the mailing address would have been Portsmouth, Ohio. Uh, it's got the captain's name and um, some of the other officers here listed. So the work that uh, the Minute Company um, um, 15, was it 1520, uh, uh, the work that they did largely out of uh, Camp Shawnee number two was uh, road construction. And so I believe these are uh, folks from uh, from uh, that company uh, doing some road construction. Um, and you can see a lot of it was uh, quite labor intensive uh, of busting up huge stones to uh, to level out uh, roads through the Shawnee State Forest. And these roads were meant as fire breaks, um, but also were designed for uh, tourist purposes uh, with the idea of auto tourism um, in the park. And here is here is a finished road um, that was constructed uh, by these men at Camp Shawnee number two. Another photo, one of the rare photos we do have of uh, the men from uh, Shawnee number two. Um, these gentlemen are uh, are collecting seeds from pine cones as part of the reforestation program. All right, I want to. Now go back to my uh, app again and we're going to go to another location um, and this one would be Camp Adams. All right. So let's go back. I'm going to zoom back out again. Let's see. So Camp Adams uh, is named uh, Camp Adams because this is actually located in Adams County. It's just over the border. The Shawnee State Forest is largely located um, uh, in Scioto County, but there is a little bit over uh, in Adams County. So um, zooming in here. Oh, not that one. Let's see. Here we go. Is this it? Oh, <laughs> here we go. So this is Camp Adams. Um, the image that you see there is from the article inside a historical called the burning of uh, CC Camp Adams. Um, and this is a location um, where there was a mysterious fire, a suspicious fire, and there's some reason to think it might have been sabotage, uh, but uh, it was never fully established. Um, and it generally the official explanation was that there was a a fire that that broke out um, uh, from a, a, a defective stove um, and it spread from uh, one barrack building to the next barrack building uh, until uh, they were all essentially burned down. Um, interestingly though, uh, the officer's headquarters was not burned. Um, uh, so that remains somewhat suspicious, but like I said, there is reason to think that it was related to um, some racial conflict uh, in the area connected to the camp. Um, there are camp inspection reports and incident reports associated with Camp Adams and really all of the, the camps in Shawnee. If there was any kind of incident that had to be a report filed uh, uh, with officials in Washington. Um, and so there, there are some uh, reports dealing with the fire, but also with um, local opposition to the camp uh, some uh, letters that were sent to the camp commander, for example, that express some racial animosity towards the camp. Um, so it could be that uh, this burning of Camp Adams might have been a, 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 an event of sabotage. Um, <clears throat> whatever the case, um, the, the camp, let's see, the men there uh, are responsible for building um, one of the forest's most beautiful reservoirs. It's a small little reservoir known as Churn Creek. And here's uh, some photos of the construction of, uh, of Churn Creek um, that we have here in the app. 
All right. So let me get back to my PowerPoint again. So there probably are about a dozen photographs um, that capture the African Americans working in the Shawnee State Forest as part of the CCC. Um, and this one uh, is really a great photograph uh, showing, showing the men building the Churn Creek Reservoir. A lot of hand labor. And here is the uh, finished uh, lake with some water in it. Um, if you visit there today, uh, uh, you'll you'll note that the trees are much much larger. Um, that it really has the forest truly has come back here, uh, and it's a beautiful uh, little spot hidden away deep in the Shawnee State Forest. Another photograph of the uh, burned out camp at Camp Adams. So. Uh, one more uh, camp stop that I want to make. Um, this is uh, CCC Camp Gordon. Um, <clears throat> and then rather than going back to my app, I think I will just uh, stick with the slide presentation for this. But we're uh, we're heading back towards uh, uh, the heart of, of uh, the forest and the park. Uh, camp Gordon is located uh, on State Route 125, just above the State uh, Lodge. Uh, at uh, Shawnee State Park, um, and it it is next to uh, Wolfton Lake. So Wolfton Lake was uh, uh, built by the men of uh, Camp Gordon. Uh, here's a, a photograph from from the 1930s, just after it was constructed. And if you visit it today, it looks very similar, um, uh, and it has been well maintained, uh, and it's a beautiful spot, a popular spot. Uh, for those in the know, um, particularly on a full moon, uh, I would recommend visiting uh, Wolfden Lake. So just down the road from uh, from uh, Wolfden uh, is the CCC cabin at the Nature Center. Maybe I will um, share my app one more time for this. Um, let's see. All right, so we'll go back, zoom back out, and let's see, let's take a look here. You can see how the park, the area in green, is located right in the heart of the state forest. Um, I'll show you where this is, uh, where Camp Gordon is in Wolfden Lake, so just above the uh, lodge um, right up here. Um, if you come down 125, uh, there's Turkey Creek Lake, and here is where you find the Nature Center. There's the Shawnee State Park Nature Center, uh, and here is the CCC cabin at Shawnee State uh, Park. So the cabin was moved to this location. This is not where it originally was located. Um, it actually comes from uh, Camp Shawnee Number 1. Uh, it was uh, it was moved to be preserved and and to be redeveloped as a as a little museum uh, to the state uh, park forest as well as to the CCC. So let me switch back one more time. And um, here we go. So. Um, this is really a gem, uh, you know, one of the great gems of the Shawnee State uh, Park and Forest is this CCC Cabin and Museum. And uh, its location just next to the Nature Center uh, uh, means that a lot of people get to see it, um, uh, you know, at least uh, pre-COVID uh, and post-COVID. We'll have a lot of visitors, I'm sure. Um, but if you come visit the park, uh, there's always great programming at the Nature Center. You can go to the cabin. The cabin will, would be open uh, when the nature center is open. There's uh, exhibits in there, um, a photo gallery of historical photographs uh, that tells the story of the CCC as well. One thing I would say about the building um, is that it is made out of American chestnut. Um, this, this was wood that uh, uh, 
was uh, salvaged by the CCC from uh, the blight that basically destroyed the American chestnut throughout all of the United States. Um, and the CCC came in and built a lot of uh, structures um, and other some other federal programs also um, uh, built Camp Oyo, uh, which used the American chestnut timbers that were salvaged by the CCC. So I want to um, sort of wrap up uh, my presentation um, and I'll have time for some questions, but I want to wrap it up by talking about some of the latest research um, that uh, that I've been doing uh, with my students again at Shawnee State. Um, <clears throat> there's there's an intersection with my research that has recently you know come about, and that is I've been also been researching um, the civil rights movement uh, in Portsmouth and um, the history of the community center there in the 14th the 14th Street Community Center, which is um, located in the North End neighborhood, which is the historically African-American neighborhood of, of Portsmouth. Um, you know, Appalachia often is, is uh, depicted and thought to be, you know, largely a, a white place, um, but there's a really a lot of African-American history uh, in Portsmouth, in Southern Ohio, going all the way back to the days of the initial settlement. Um, and so one of the things that, you know, my work uh, aims to do is to sort of reintegrate our history to recover this lost history and the, and the history of the CCC, particularly the African-American contributions of the CCC has, has been very much um, neglected. Uh, it had been uh, basically forgotten. Um, and, um, you know, so we're, I think we're doing important work that shows the cultural value of resources that we have in Shawnee State Forest. And I think that there's a lot of potential here to um, you know, provide uh, educational resources and, and for the forest to attract people um, to the cultural resources. The history of the forest is very, very rich. Um, so there are connections and what I'm finding is these connections between the CCC uh, and what's going on in Portsmouth. So um, Portsmouth had an NAACP chapter uh, and during the 1930s, um, with the arrival of these uh, camps and you know hundreds of African Americans just on the outskirts of, of Portsmouth, there was interest in trying to um, create educational uh, or, or entertainment opportunities, um, social opportunities for the CCC men when they came into town, because they could they could have leave and they could go into town. Um, this would lead to a couple different um, uh, developments. One is that there became popular support uh, amongst like the Rotary Club, Kiwanis, other civic organizations for the creation of a community center uh, in the city's historically black neighborhood. And this would ultimately bear fruit in the, in the creation and the construction of the 14th Street Community Center, which was done with uh, uh, federal monies through, as well as some uh, city money from the city of Portsmouth, um, through the National Youth Administration, which was another jobs program um, that had a had a special division uh, for for African American uh, jobs, and so the 14th Street Community Center would be built by African American labor uh, with uh, federal funds as well as some state support, um, and it was meant from its beginning to also provide a place for the men of company, I'm sorry, the, the men of uh, Camp Shawnee number no. two specifically. Newspaper accounts say that it was being built and opened so that those men could also use the facilities. The other thing I was gonna mention is that um, the, the NAACP um, uh, organized a boycott of a, of a movie theater in Portsmouth because they were going to uh, start segregating, uh, running special segregated viewings of movies um, for African Americans. Um, and this seems to have gone against some of the, uh, you know, existing sort of practices in the city that that uh, the movie theaters were not completely segregated like that with special segregated uh, screenings. Um, and so they worked actually with uh, the Pleasant Green Baptist Church uh, was the location of a, a meeting with uh, uh, NAA 
NAACP uh, uh, local leaders, as well as members of the CCC, the local enrollees, the African-American enrollees, and they had a successful boycott. They actually uh, pretty much shut down uh, the theater that was attempting to do this. So there's a lot of fascinating history uh, associated with the CCC, and really we're just we're just starting to, to learn uh, and discover these stories. So I'll leave it at that and see if I got any questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Fite. That was, um, I'm so excited about this app. I've been wanting to go down to Shining for a while. And now that I know about this app, I'm definitely going to use that. We had a lot of questions about that um, coming in. So just to remind our viewers, um, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A box. But the links for the app, um, both for Apple and on Google, are posted in the Q&A. Um, and we did have questions about where the lodge is at Shawnee. So if you're not aware, there is a lodge at Shawnee State Park. If you want to go down and stay and explore all of these awesome sites. Um, but I think that, you know, it looks like you must have done a great presentation because we don't have questions for you right now. <laughs> so um, just thank you for your time with for being with us today. And if you missed anything, a couple of people said they missed the beginning. Um, this video will be posted on the Ohio DNR YouTube page. So go ahead and check that out in a couple of days when um, we have it uploaded. And thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.